Hey guys, welcome back to Learning Curve Tech, where I learn tech with you. And today, I thought I would show you guys how you can download, install, and set up Stop Motion Pro Eclipse, or SMP as I'll call it throughout the rest of this video. But before we get started, why don't you head down below and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to get more high quality creative tech videos every week. So to get started, SMP is what I use for all of my stop motion videos. If you want to check out those videos, click the link above. It's a great program. There's a lot of lo I like about it and there's also a lot I don't like about it. But so far it has been a very positive experience for me using SMP and it's a quick software it's an easy software and it works with my camera really well which is really helpful for me because i can get the best quality possible and not have to worry too much about it it's also a good all-in-one stop motion package so if you are looking for a sort of mid-range not too expensive not too cheap stop motion package that really does everything you need then go ahead and check that out. I'll have it linked in the description below. And also, if you wanna see an overview of SMP compared to other programs, click this link right above. So, let's begin. I'm over here at the Stop Motion Pro website, which I'll link below, as I already mentioned. First, if you wanna buy it, go to purchase, and then online shop. And you have several options. You have Eclipse HD, which is $185, or Eclipse HD subscription, which is $18 per month. The only other option besides the subscription and the one time, which by the way, I would recommend getting the one time only because if you want to use this often, the subscription is not going to be enough for you. You're going to want to just pay more upfront and have the ability to use it for years to come. You also have Eclipse SD, which is kind of a less powerful less powerful version of Eclipse HD. Now you also have several other options. I won't go into those because they won't really apply to you that much. But before you download Eclipse, make sure you're getting the version you want and also make sure that it will work with your computer. You will need Windows 10, 8.1 or 8, so no Windows 7. Sorry if you're still using that. Uh, you'll need an i7 or an i5 CPU, no i3s. You'll need eight gigabytes of RAM, so you can't have four gigabytes, you have to have eight gigabytes. More is preferable. 200 gigabyte hard drive, because they'll have to store all your images that you take from your camera, they'll have to store it onto your hard drive, so you'll need a lot of space. And when you're using a DSLR, it says preferably use an SSD. And then if you're using a Mac, of course, all you need is Apple Boot Camp and a copy of Windows 10. When you are ready to download Stop Motion Pro Eclipse, you can either download a free trial, and you give your name, your email, and a verification code, and then you'll download that, or you can just download the regular copy. And you're going to download the software, then you're going to install it, and then they're gonna send you a code and you're gonna fill out all their information. And I'm not gonna go into this because it would take a while to go through, but Stop Motion Pro has a whole list of what you need to do to download and install that. And I don't think we really have to go more into that than is necessary. So once you have downloaded and in, excuse me. So once you have downloaded and installed your personal copy of Stop Motion Pro, you will be greeted by the product, the production management page. It has a list of all your productions. You can click on any of these productions and play them through, delete them, rename them, you name it. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to just call ours Stop Motion because that's what I wanted to name it. And when you are ready, click OK. Oh, and actually, one more thing about the production management page. If you want to make a new one, it's, it seems tricky because there's no add a new production button. You really just have to go up to this tab, delete it, type in a new name, but we're just going to use this one. So that's how you use your production management page. And once you have opened your production, typically you'll be greeted by nothing. And you'll be like, hey, wait, where, what's, it's supposed to have a picture. What's wrong? And you're going to be like, but really, don't panic. 
all you have to do is go over to camera and find your camera. If you have a Canon DSLR or Nikon DSLR, it should work. Check their page to find out which cameras you can use. I'll link this specific link to the cameras below. I know that it doesn't have as many camera options as you like. There aren't any Sony cameras, Olympus, Pentax, but another software called Dragonframe does have a lot more and I mentioned that in this video above. So click whatever type of capture you're gonna do, whether you're gonna do webcam, directory scan, Canon or Nikon DSLR, or no capture type if you don't wanna make an animation. Once you have your Canon DSLR hooked up or your webcam hooked up and turned on, make sure it's turned on, make sure if it's a DSLR, make sure it's on manual mode, then you can change your settings and you can change your shutter speed from a slow shutter speed to get more of a blur to a high shutter speed to get more of the frozen action. But typically 150th, 125th, it doesn't really matter because if your camera's on a tripod, which it should be anyways, you're not gonna have too much shake. Right here, the AV is the aperture that allows you to set your depth of field to see how much of your picture is in focus. And then your ISO, which determines the sensitivity of your camera's sensor. So lower sensitivity means less digital noise, higher sensitivity means more digital noise. Typically 800 to 400 is pretty good, depending on your lighting. And again, all this really depends on your lighting. So don't try, just follow whatever looks best to you. Over here, we have a white balance. There's auto, daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, manual. And the best that I usually use is tungsten. Don't use auto. It will change every time you take a picture. And I've done that before. It is incredibly frustrating because you can't really go back and fix it unless you use RAW, which is up here. If you use RAW, you can change a lot more settings later. And the only thing about RAW files is they're a lot larger of a file. So you may not want to use that if you don't have a lot of space on your computer. But it's great if you want to have a lot of editing flexibility. You also have large super fine, large fine, medium super fine, medium fine, small super fine, small fine, and raw plus large. You don't have to use large super fine. I used to use this all the time, but 5184 by 3456, the size of the image, is way too big. It's basically 5K. You're going to want to either go down to medium, which is closer to 4K, or small, which I believe is about 2K. I use small because I really don't have the ability to edit higher than that. It's just, it takes up a lot of space in your computer. So that's all for the setting up of the camera settings. There's a lot more settings in here. And in the next video, I'll go more in detail into other settings. But if you have any questions concerning the setup, of SMP, why don't you go ahead and ask me in the comments below and I'll try to answer that in a future video. If you like this video, why don't you go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell to get high quality creative tech videos every week. That's all for today guys and I'll see you next time on Learning Curve Tech.